The cyber truck is too expensive. Yes, yes, it is. Um, is it? Is it really? Uh, I'm of the opinion it is not. Uh, so here to discuss that with me is our good friend Randy Kirk. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. Oh, 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 oh. It's too expensive. It's way too expensive. Okay. Well, th thanks for your time. Thanks for your time. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> so. I'd seen rumors all over the place, some saying it's going to be so much cheaper than you think, some saying it's going to be, you know, 100 grand, 150 grand. And I'd said all along, no, it's going to be, they're going to launch with the dual motor because dual motor is Tesla's favorite. They're going to launch it at a price under the $80,000 cap, and they always use a 990 pricing scheme. So I said, look, based on the cost of the Rivian, based on the cost of the Lightning, it's going to be 79,990 dual motor. And I came in on the penny because, you know, time travelers. <laughs> so before we start our discussion in the comments, is it too expensive? What price were you expecting? What price would you actually do? So let's talk about it. Well, first of all, I can tell you that T Tony and I, my wife and I have already discussed it and we will wait if we get to uh we're, I think we're about uh, 167,000 is our number or something. If our number comes up, we will defer because we'll get the single motor. We don't need, I mean, I need to go zero to 60, but she's, it's going to be her car. She doesn't need all that extra power. So we'll wait for the less expensive one, but we will add the matte black and we will add FSD. So we'll eventually almost get up there. But, you know, it's the 79 would be for us to add another to matte black to that and the FSD. You're talking about some serious money, but there's a whole bunch of folks out there. I'm sure you think that there's a bunch of guys and gals who will pay the 100,000 and add the matte black and the FSD. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you, it is my belief that these are three different vehicles. It's not three levels, it's three different vehicles. There are people, and really to me, it comes down to range. If you want range, don't get the tri-motor, don't get the single motor. If you don't need range and you don't need all wheel drive, we got gotcha. you, it's the single motor. But if you look at the other trucks, comparable electric trucks of which there are precisely two, it's the Rivian and the Lightning, specifically the Lariat trim level. There's a chart we've got on the screen right now that shows the different specs, they're all real quick, zero to 60. They're all comparable kind of everything. The price works out to be about the same. Even with the credit difference, they're within just a couple thousand dollars of each other. And it's between those three trucks, I think it would come down to a matter of taste and a matter of charging network. Because who's buying an, a non-NACS truck, a non-CCS a CCS charging car in 2023, 2024? I don't know. But somebody, I hope, because we need those companies to survive. So looking at the specs, does anything jump out at you? Well, the things that jump out at me are the things that just aren't even available on the other, other two trucks. I mean, they don't have a potential for full self-driving at all. It's not possible. Um, they no. don't come standard with a almost full self-driving. So you have uh, some significant things that just aren't even, I mean, and the list goes on and on, actually. We could, you know, things like the uh, the, the lockdown tunnel, not available. And the here. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the rear steering, the, the traction resistance. I mean, I, oh, yeah, I, I, I bet you there's like, I, I don't know this for sure, but I doubt if the Rivian or the Ford have the capability of doing a farts in the backseat, you know, remotely from the driving seat. Well, all gasoline cars are in fart mode permanently. So that's got to be worth that? something. In terms of the price, and I know we discussed this on your show. Oh, we're probably about to in a couple hours. <laughs> One of the things discussed is. We're going uh, to discuss it. <laughs> yeah is the dual motor was originally 49.9 or 49.990, 50 grand. Right. With inflation over the last four years, which has been quite rampant, that's now 58,000. And it was not eligible for the federal credit. Right. So even if it was just nothing had changed except inflation, 58,000 is where you'd be. So we're at 70 minus the 7,500. That's only 62,500. We're only off by five grand. Mm -hmm. We're only off on the price by 10%. If you order something and you don't, you're not sure what the price is actually going to be. If your mechanic comes in within 10% of the estimate, if your contractor comes in within 10% of the estimate, 
You can be a little unhappy, but you're not going to be furious. You're not going to be livid. And it has a bunch of stuff that was not even possible four years ago, either possible or certainly not within the realm of what anybody was thinking was going to be on the Cybertruck when it came out. You mentioned a minute ago, rear view screen. I joke about it, but we've got the pullout glove box. I mean, that costs a little bit extra money and it is valuable, I think. You've got the... Um, Interior lighting, this this neon lighting, that's that's an additional cost. You've got the better seat covers, anything close to what they had four years ago. Now are they gonna they're gonna be um perf front and back, but are, are the front well, seats gonna have ventilated? Are they gonna be ventilated in the front? I don't know on that. I haven't heard, so I'm gonna guess no, but that's a good question. We've got the no destroy your rims hubs. <laughs> I mean, mm. you know how huge that is for me. I want to sh- I, I want to show you my car someday and you can take a look at all four wheels. Oh my gosh, what a mess. <laughs> now on the glove box, I don't know if that's going to be effective because I've heard that pull out is not effective, but that's probably a different matter. There's a lot of little features. There's a lot of little features like that. I know Rivian likes to brag that they've got their gear tunnel, which is cool and I think more useful than people might give it credit for, putting your tools or your ski equipment or anything dirty in there, that's great. This has a full-size spare, which is a first for Tesla to have any spare at all. And some people said, well, why didn't you just put more battery right there? And the answer is weight distribution. You don't want that much weight that far back. Jordan Giesige yesterday on X put out a great, yesterday, day before, put out a great uh, explainer on what's going on with the battery. Why is the range not 500? And what he said is so few people are likely to need that kind of capacity that putting it in that many trucks would force them into a position where they couldn't make as many trucks as they want to make. So they're going to have to balance, they have to balance that out. And why, uh, you know, and the, but the range on the, on the standard is you know, on the single motor is too low. 250 is what it was announced at. I don't know how you can be disappointed that it hit the target with a better truck. Well, so, well and, Jor- and Jordan is talking about the advantage or the disadvantage to Tesla in the manufacturing realm. But what about the consumer? Why do I want to pay for all that extra battery? I'm never only on a road trip. Am I going to ever need that additional range? There's just no, I mean, you know, and we're buying the car. Millions, hundreds of thousands of people are going to buy that truck who are city dwellers like me and who are never, ever going to need a hundred miles a day, even. (laughs) I mean, it's the longest commute I've ever had in Los Angeles was 45 miles one way. That's 90 miles a day. So you can put a a good charger in your garage and charge up overnight. No problem. No problem. And the other thing to remember is this is launch pricing. It's coming out at 80,000. They're going to go through the order book sequentially and say, are you ready to configure? And if somebody says not yet, they'll just keep going. So if you're willing to pay 80 and most people aren't, you're going to get your truck sooner. And then they'll drop it to 78 and go back to the top and say, now you're ready, now you're ready. And then just keep going back and dropping it. And the economies of scale continue to improve as you ramp, meaning whatever margin they have today is only going to increase as time goes on and they cut prices. And as a stockholder, I'm going, duh, that's what I want you to do. I mean, I want you to charge as much as you possibly can for the vehicle. If I was Tesla, I would have said, we've got uh, 50 here up for auction. Yes. yes. And whoever wants the first 50, if you want to spend a million dollars to get VIN number one, start bidding, baby. But that would have been an interesting way. I think there might have been some backlash for the depth of money grab that would have been. But well, why they could have they could have donated it, you know, done the uh, auction and donated the money to a great cause. It would have made fantastic headlines. Yeah. But the beauty is they, these are making fantastic headlines everywhere. I saw Doug DeMuro was saying, well, they only brought the friendlies in to do interviews and to do reviews and not, not me. It was like, uh, you know, I know hundreds of friendlies who are friendlier than even the people they invited. And that's not who they invited. Car wow. It has not historically been an easy publication on Tesla. Yeah. Uh, Fully Charged has been quite critical of Elon in a number of ways over the years. Uh, but these are big publications. 
Marquez Brownlee, you know, mostly covers cell phones and, and other tech, but he's a great presenter with a great chip. They brought in the biggest. And Doug DeMiro, while huge, is in the same cast as me in this system. So we're both untouchables. Back to your original your original idea for this particular episode, Brian, it would seem to me, I went down that list and just going line by line by line, I do this all the time. I've been a, you know, as a manufacturer over the years, I'm a buyer. You have to be a buyer if you're going to be in a manufacturing or any kind of business. And I went down that list and, you know, quite frankly, Tesla won on almost every single line. You can say it was close. You can say, oh, well, the other guys won here and there, but quite frankly, Tesla was ahead of the pack, almost down the entire list. It did have the quickest zero to 60, It right? It did yes. have the highest cargo capacity. capacity. It did yes. have the highest tow rating. Yes. Um, it did have the smallest battery. The longest bed. The longest bed. It did have the most cargo space. Yes. Um, enclosed cargo space. Yes. Ford's got a bigger frunk. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Interestingly, if you look at the maximum speed, all three of them are 112 miles per hour. I wonder if that's a regulation because otherwise it doesn't think, make I sense. Think, I think they've got, yeah, they're obviously governing it <clears throat> at that point. In fact, in one of the drag race things that I watched the other day, they had to take out the governor so that they could run the quarter mile because the Tesla was getting past the governor level before it got to the quarter mile. And it, so it was it was not able to win the quarter mile until they solved that. I wonder if the problem is the rating on the tires. Maybe truck tires are only rated to 115. Awesome. So they, I know there was a recall Ford had on one of their trucks, I think it was. An engineer told me this, a Ford engineer told me this, where at 117, the drive shaft would fly apart from centrifugal force. And because they had a, a drive shaft that was, you know, three inches thick. Meanwhile, they're looking at Toyota, who's got a, a drive shaft that's half the diameter, a third of the mass. So they had a recall. And you know how they fixed it? Governor. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Governor over there fixed it. So, so then, so then Brian also not on the list is the body. It's like everybody seems to have forgotten kind of the, you know, okay, it looks crazy. It looks wild to have this stainless steel body and it's all angular and everything. And it's futuristic or it's ugly or it's whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, it's not going to get hurt on a construction site or off roading. It's 17 inches of clearance for off-roading. You don't have to paint it, so it's going to save money in the paint shop. Uh, you don't have to ever wash it. For police departments, they just have the perp come up to the car, and they just put their hand on it, and boom, they've got the fingerprints just like that. I mean, there's so many advantages to the car. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I, I saw a guy saying, I live in Michigan, and my roads are salted, and I don't care about stainless and aluminum because I use these trucks for work, and by the time they get rusted, they're already garbage anyway. And I said, right, but the fact that you don't care doesn't mean that nobody cares. Right. There are people who definitely care about that, and for them, this is the only truck to buy, the yes. only one. There will come a day when a policeman's life is saved by the skin. <laughs> yeah. And once that happens, there will be a mandate in all cities to please transition our officers to this, the safest consumer grade road vehicle ever made. Exactly. Exactly. Ooh. I was saying, apart from the BMW 750iP, which was a, a literal armored car that BMW oh, okay. made. But go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, so I keep saying it over and over again on my show, Brian. I said it on your show already. This is not a step change. This is not an evolutionary change in vehicles. This is a revolutionary change because the list, one of my uh, listeners, maybe he sends you emails as well, R. Bremer, I don't know, loves to write, you know, 50,000 word emails. He made a list of all the differences, all the things that are step up from any other vehicle that any other vehicles ever had. And the list was, it just went on and on and on. It is a, it is a revolution. I, I just don't see it any other way.
Wow. Okay. So again, in the comments, tell me what price did you think is right? What feature is the best feature? You know, like, subscribe, do the usual things. Head over to Randy Kirk's channel. Check him out. For everybody else, uh, you know, stay tuned, stay juicy. And I can't wait to hear from you clever robots when I finally get back home.